Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Paranormal News. Tonight's article comes from ChristianPost.com, and the headline is, I Could See Demons, One Woman's Shocking Possession, Exorcism Story. It was written by Billy Hallowell, and it was published on Wednesday, September 16th, 2020. An Arkansas woman with no history of mental illness said she suddenly found herself in deep emotional turmoil in 2006, with doctors unable to diagnose her rapidly deteriorating condition. Within months overtaken by suicidal thoughts, Amy plunged from a second-story window and was paralyzed and nearly died. Now she's speaking out, explaining that she believes she experienced a dramatic demonic possession and healing. Her experience is told in detail in the new book, Playing with Fire, a modern investigation into demons, exorcism, and ghosts. I've never had any kind of mental problems, never been on medication for anything like that, Amy said in a recent interview, noting that within days of her affliction, she went from a successful nurse to a person who couldn't think clearly. Listen to Amy share her story on the Edify podcast with Billy Hallowell at the 42 minute mark. So that right here is that podcast. If you want to listen to it, go to christianpost.com and it's right here. I'm not going to play it because I don't know if it's got copyright or anything like that. and I don't want to get a strike on the channel. Amy's personal drama unfolded one day while she was working at a hospital and dealing with a burn patient who had survived an explosion. While I was in the ER giving a report, something wasn't right with me, she recalled. I went upstairs to do my chart and it's like my mind went out the window. Amy wondered what was unfolding. The mental duress continued to afflict her when she later went for a run and was unable to jog in a straight line. I told my husband, I think I'm having a nervous breakdown. My mind is not right, she said. As Playing With Fire explains, doctors put Amy on antidepressants, but she said the drugs did nothing to curb her problems and the situation further devolved. They ended up putting me in a psychiatric hospital, she said, and the psychiatrist said, we don't know what you're dealing with. We've never seen anything like this. As time went on, Amy was in and out of hospitals with suicidal thoughts suddenly overtaking her mind and heart. Nobody knew what was going on, and this happened in April and through the summer, she said. I was so messed up, I wanted to kill myself, and I just could not think how to do it. One day, Amy found herself sitting in a second floor windowsill at her home as thoughts of death once again flooded her mind. I was sitting in the window and I thought to myself, if I fall out of this window, I bet I'll die because it's so far down and it's a brick patio, she said. So I fell out of the window. Amy said she doesn't remember much of what unfolded next as she landed on her head on the hard patio two stories below. Any person in their right mind, if you're falling, you're going to brace yourself. That's a normal reflex, she said. My legs and arms were not broken. I did not brace myself. The impact of the fall was sweeping, with Amy breaking the majority of her ribs, puncturing her lungs, and breaking her back in three places. Fourteen years later, she is still paralyzed. They didn't think I was going to survive, she said. But while Amy lay in her hospital bed recovering, a stranger named Cindy felt compelled to visit. While there, Cindy performed what some Christians call a deliverance, which is similar to an exorcism. She felt really led to come see me, Amy said. 
She said when they got there, I looked at her and I had a male voice coming out of my mouth saying, what are you doing here? Amy believes Cindy cast a demon out and that her life was transformed as a result. For her part, Cindy has also openly spoken about the experience. I could see the demons, she told KATV TV last year, noting that she uttered a simple command in that hospital room. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I command that these demons release her and come out of her, and that she comes to her right mind, in Jesus' name. In the end, Amy believes she was healed. My family saw a difference, and they were thinking something's better, she said, noting, though, that there are still mysteries surrounding her story. Amy, who was a churchgoer before the incident, isn't sure why she was afflicted. Regardless, she is now much closer to God and is encouraging others to cling to their faith. It's brought me so much closer to God and to know that his love for me, it wasn't him that did that, of course, it was the enemy, she said. God's love is amazing. Seek the Lord with all of your heart. And that is the end of this article. This is a pretty cool story because it touches on a couple things that I think are pretty important. One is that when you have a possession or an attachment by a demonic entity, it isn't like it is in the movies, okay? A possession or an attachment. First of all, possession is extremely rare. It almost never happens. It's almost always an attachment. But when you're dealing with a demonic entity, it's not like the exorcist where the, the person's head spins around and they projectile vomit pea soup across the room and, and fly and head levitate and all that. That stuff doesn't happen usually. Most times what you're dealing with with a possession is exactly what this lady was dealing with. Depression, suicidal thoughts, mental illness, uh, physical illness, different diseases and stuff like that that pop up out of nowhere. Problems at work, problems with your attitude. Your whole life seems to come crashing down around you. Everything that could possibly go wrong seems to go wrong in your life. Those are the trademark moves of a demonic entity. That's usually the way it works. You don't usually have the scary demon monster that jumps out at you from the dark like you would in a horror movie. That's not the way it happens. The other thing in this that's very interesting to me is the fact that this woman felt compelled, felt led by God to come and visit her. And when she got there, she was able to cast that demon out through commanding it out in Jesus' name. I think that's a very important thing as well, because some people will tell you that the only way you can get rid of a demon is if a Catholic priest comes and does a full-on exorcism. And that's really just not the case. Regular Christians can do an exorcism if they know how, and if they have faith. But you have to have a lot of faith. Jesus commands us to cast out demons. He tells us that we can do what he does. He tells us if we have the faith of a mustard seed, we can tell a mountain to move from here to there and it'll do it. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a mustard seed, but a mustard seed is tiny. It is one of the smallest and most insignificant seeds in all of the plant kingdom. So what he's telling you there is if you have even the tiniest bit of faith, real, true faith, you can move mountains. Now, did he mean that you could really move a mountain from here to there? Probably not. It was probably a, a figurative way to say that you can do anything with faith. And he definitely told us to cast out demons. And I've actually seen it happen. I've seen regular Christians 
cast out demons before. So I know it can happen. I work on a team with a sanctioned exorcist and a demonologist. All three of us are Christian. And we go head to head with stuff like this. So the power of God is what drives these things out. And if you have faith and you have God on your side, then you can do this. I honestly believe that. Now, there will be people that argue with me, and that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. I'm telling you what I have seen in my own experience. So that is the end of this article. Um, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I mean, that's crazy. She jumped out of that window and took a header two stories into the pavement of the patio, and she never even tried to block her own fall. I mean, that takes some serious something. Guts, courage, craziness, something. That's not normal. Most people will definitely try to break their fall. So that that's nuts, man. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you would, that would be amazing. And thank you for joining me for this. And I will catch you on the next article. Until I speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye.